Hey guys, I got a 60 inch Maverick bad boy lawnmower here. Had this for probably a year now, 747cc. As I say, it's a bad boy. It's pretty good. I got it through uh, Tractor Supply because they were the only ones that had one due to the uh, uh, shortage at the time. And it was pretty tough to even get this, but I needed a bigger lawnmower. It's a Kohler Confidant motor. That's all you could get on their version of the bad boy. But it's, so far, it's been pretty good. Real rugged. Uh, seems to be working real good. I got about four acres that I mow with it. And I've been pretty happy with it. Getting ready to do a oil change. Uh, there's a couple grease points on it, not too many. The um, oil is pretty easy to change. There's a filter down here. And then there's a uh, tube that sticks down here. You need a 5 8 and 11 16 wrench to do that. And it just done, I'll show it to you in a minute. And then uh, a small filter wrench to do the, uh, to drop the filter. And then here's the filter here. And then what I like to run in these small motors, what I call a small motor, even though it's 25 some odd horse, is uh, 1550 Mobile One. It's a little hard to get, it's expensive, but you only run a couple quarts in these things. And um, so, you, you know, I like the, 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 the better oil for that. The, I run the Royal Purple pretty much in everything I have and some AMSOL stuff that are running the gears and the uh, differentials and stuff like that. So it's pretty good so far. But uh, yeah, so we'll drain the oil. I'll show you right here's the uh, drain. I'll get down, bear with me, on the ground behind this. And I've already loosened this because of the uh, I needed the hands to run the camera, so let's drain this puppy. It's a little warm, I've just been running it. It's got 45 hours on, on it, but I changed the oil at about five hours. So it, uh, probably 40 hours. I think they recommend it 50 to change it. Doesn't look too dirty, pretty clean. Again, uh, some of that oil that I had, I had, it's not quite a year, <laughs> but I'll change it pretty often. But that, uh, I bought like a case of it, and I've been using it in all my small engines, pressure washers, things like that. So, yeah, but uh, we'll let that drain down. And then uh, over here, they did a little, uh, it's kind of neat, they did a, a little opening there for the filter. So when you get ready to drain it, it uh, runs through that hole somewhat. <laughs> and then this has two uh, has ZT 3200 hydro drives, which I liked. I wanted the bigger ones that uh, had a little bit more oomph to them. I got I uh, gave my son-in-law my 50-inch Toro, uh, and it had the smaller hydrostatic drives, but they did pretty good. I, I was real impressed with them. These these let's see how hot. these yeah they're pretty hot, but these have um, a filters on them. So you can change them, drain them, change the filters on them. More commercial, I guess you'd call it. But yeah, I've been pretty happy with it. It's, yeah, it uh, it doesn't mess around because it's a pretty stout machine as far as uh, frame, things like that. And then uh, I don't, yeah, it's carbureted. So I don't think it was fuel injected, this one. There was, a, I think they only offered, I don't know if it was the Honda or the Kawasaki that was fuel injected. And you just couldn't get them. Like I said, you know, just draining down pretty good. I don't worry about the every last little drop because I do short change these things a little bit. So I'm not too worried about the, uh, this uh, thing, uh, you know, being completely drained. But yeah, so we'll go over here to the, uh, let me go over here to the filter. Let me get situated here, guys. Let me get back up off of uh, off of the ground a little. Move my pan over. Forgive me, because I'm doing this one-handed. Yep. And I'll tighten that. I'll lay. I have to lay the phone down to tighten that back up. 
but yeah so and again like i say i'm still getting used to editing so it'll take me a little bit to get things situated where i can edit better and i don't you guys don't have to put up with the slow pace of this and i got my filter wrench i found it was pretty easy to reach in around this frame and uh get get to the filter this way with this wrench get back here see if you can see it and i can get it to turn pretty easy i hand tighten these um i was told once by an old guy with these filters you hand tighten them it's all you really need they pulse when the pump pumps and uh it'll actually help tighten it a little bit more the pulse rate and then uh see it's kind of kind of runs down in there but yeah so yeah not much came out so it's not too bad it is warm right now so kind of hot but let me get her get her off here guys there's some splashed out and again i'm not like a big uh worried about filling up the filter and all that stuff that a lot of people do especially on these small motors they pump up pretty fast um, you do make sure you get a little bit of oil on the uh, on the ring and again I'm not like uh, you know I'll, I'll make sure there isn't uh, the other um, rubber seal left on the filter as you can see here you know both filters are here this one's not too dirty it uh, I put a little you put a little oil on this seal and then uh, you get back up in there and put her back in the uh, little motor it'll pump this filter pretty quickly full a lot of times you can fill them up I used to be a real fanatic about it and let them sit overnight full of oil and then I would put a little extra in it and put them back on and uh, but I've never smoked a motor I've run a lot of high power engines a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff and I've never had a problem. I've never had an engine problem at all. If I get an engine, if I have an engine, they last me. I run them hard, but I understand them. So, but yeah, so it's in there, it's hand tight. The, I don't know if ever, you guys know, but on these filters, when they're concave on the bottom, most of your oil filters, if you ever noticed, are concaved. And that's the reason for that, I was told, and read was, uh, the pulse in the pump pumps it if it was flat it would start working back and forth almost like working a paper clip back and forth and it would break it would start to crack and if you ever drop or get a filter that uh, has a dent in it you shouldn't use it because it's another thing it'll it'll work and it'll get that it'll get a crack in it this is the dipstick pull that out set it out of the way I've got a little tray up here I bought a little accessory tray for it and I got this thing too this uh, this is a lever you pull it down and it closes off the stuff and mulches the grass this is kind of trick but what it is is I mowed this yard today with it and in the backyard well I had a ton of leaves similar to this well it ground them as you can see I didn't pick any of them up I got a little leaf catcher thing there but I haven't had to use it because I'll set this thing on about three inches high and then just mow and it grinds all the leaves up. Now down in here, I'll probably use it because it's just so many leaves, they get kind of jammed up. But again, down in there, it doesn't look too bad and there doesn't a lot of grass grow down in there anyway and it helps with erosion. But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, put oil in this thing. I gotta get my filters and fill it up with oil, but uh, I'll go ahead and stop and then I'll come back. I'll see if I can edit these together because I really need to be doing that. I don't know if I can. And uh, so it's set up right where you just get a, a, a good. Okay, guys, I'm back filling this up. I forgot. I think I was um, thinking about my other mower, but the seat tilts up on this and the floor tilts up on this uh, really neat uh, they really give you a lot of access to this and uh, so the floor will tilt up here 
and you can clean out your deck. And then, uh, like I say, you see, this is like quarter inch steel. It's all welded, good welds. Um, the only grease points, lube points on it are these uh, right down in here. You can see them right here. They're uh, for the deck up and down. I'll lube those today before I get done. Check the belts, everything looks good. Like I said, uh, I got this mobile one 1550. I put a quart in there so far. Let's see where we're at. Set my filter, set my uh, inside here. I already wiped off my dipstick. And I think it gives me. Yep, about a half full right now. So let's go ahead and add the other quart. What do we got? Let me get this opened up. And I think that'll fill it up completely. It is funny to me that these things only take uh, a couple quarts as much. I guess they don't wouldn't need that much, you know, just doing the bottom end and your the engine lays on its side so you're getting oil up into the heads relatively easy. It's not like it has to push it way up there because the heads are on there. Your your valves are on the side, your rocker arms, stuff like that. But um, and it's a push rod motor, so your cam and crank are close to each other. So they're gonna get lubed pretty good. And if it's a uh, shallow pan, you don't really want ton of oil sitting down in there anyway I suppose but yeah so uh, fill this up I'll check it and then uh, we should have us a uh, oil change on this thing it's a uh, like I said 46.5 what she looks like she's running it uh, been real good so far no smoking no weird cranking I keep it plugged into a battery tender too all the time all my stuff I keep plugged in religiously because you got a bunch of little batteries sitting around and I can usually get several years out of these kind of small batteries by keeping them on a battery tender. Yeah, and then like I say, there isn't much to this. You got a, there's an air filter here, you know, that you, on the back part here, I, I, I won't mess with it right now because I don't have a replacement, but I don't like popping air filters off unless I get a replacement. But I at least want to make sure I got the oil change in it. And there's some other things here that, uh, they did really good on this. The, the components, the relay packages, waterproof and tight and separated from everything. Your solenoids, your relays, your starter solenoid, which is probably what that is, and all that. They keep it pretty, uh, pretty simple to see, get at, and service. Really been uh, happy with these things. They got a big cross beam eye bar with a torsion uh, piece of rubber there, and it rides pretty good. My, it takes me still a couple hours to mow, even with this big boy. But uh, the seat's more comfortable. And uh, yeah, it's just a big, bigger tires. The other one I had was just, it was killing me. It'd take three and a half, four hours to mow with a 50 inch. And uh, even though it was a 25 horse, but that Toro was just, it wasn't good for this size property. It, it did fine. I kept it for several years. It looked brand new when I gave it to my son-in-law. And uh, so I think uh, hopefully they'll get real good use out of it. It mows his yard like in five minutes. So, <laughs> and then uh, even here, I see it's funny. They got, uh, look at them big old bolts. They got holding that torsion front end down there. That's kind of crazy. And I think they're grade eight. I can't quite tell. I'd have to get down there. And seal bearings down here so you don't have to grease that. But yeah, I'll go ahead. I think we got it. I'll check the hole here, button it back up. I just uh, figured you guys would uh, find that interesting. Real easy to, to, to do. Now up here, this is real easy to pop to get your air filter off and i'll probably do that but i'm going to make sure i got another air filter before i pop that loose there's a lot of dust back there i don't want to break the seal and uh but yeah so this is the old uh, 60 inch bad boy thanks for watching you guys i don't know if i'm messing up doing all this moving around um see you later bye